My name is Justin Orlowski. My name is Samantha Morelli. James Mulligan. I think there's just a lot more people, I guess, going to school than there were previously. And I think it's just basically a more competitive environment. I know I studied accounting and finance and when I graduated I found it very hard to get a job in either field and I had just spent you know, thousands, tens of thousands of dollars on a college education in accounting and finance. It's decent school, it's not like I went to somewhere where you wouldn't exactly want this person handling your money. You just kind of are hoping that there's an underpinning that kind of is a reasoning behind it and it can explain it some other way besides the big growing red number. Just 20 years ago, we were the strongest manufacturing country in the world. And over the last 20 to 25 years, we've lost that reputation because we don't have it anymore. I've seen in the last 20 years great businesses and corporations either close the doors and go out of business or close the doors to move jobs overseas. We had uh, Carlson and Aikman. Um, they made fabric for car seats. Uh, been there for most of my adult lifetime. And about 10 or 12 years ago, they just closed the plant down. There were 600 jobs just lost, almost seemed like overnight. So in the case of the NAFTA, for example, which was the US, Canada, and Mexico, a lot of production moved south of the border to Mexico. And I mean auto parts and electronics and um, a lot of industrial uh, products, tool and die stuff that used to be US-based industries became uh, part of what's called the Maquiladora region in, in northern Mexico. I can look at my small town and remember when we had 600 employees at Cars and Aikman, those jobs are now gone. And I know a lot of the people there, we, I've known them through the years, uh, and they didn't replace the jobs with the same uh, pay or benefits. The tangible results of that are uh, lost jobs, uh, economic insecurity, um, lower wage rates, so the middle class wage rates have been, you know, um, uh, stuck, you know, basically flatlined for a generation now. The impact of our trade policies on our economy is everything that you see today with budget deficits and the wrangling in Congress and the unemployed, the lower wages, you can tick off a dozen, two dozen, three dozen things that are wrong with our economy right now, including deserted cities and blown out cities including desperate people and many, many, many millions of people who are on disability, who shouldn't be on disability, you could tick through a list of three dozen things and you will find all of them are related to what we've done with our trade policy. Yeah, well, I mean, if, if anybody who studied macroeconomics knows that a, a net uh, uh, net import position, in other words, negative net exports, <laughs> which we've had now for 40 years, it's a drain on your economy. We haven't added real uh, net to our stock of uh, capital goods for about 15 years. So it's no wonder that we have to import. Uh, we don't make those things anymore. We, and we certainly don't make a surplus that we could export. The NAFTA uh, WTO model that goes back to the early 90s, um, you know, uh, rests on this economic integration premise that we're integrating uh, economies around the world under these so-called free trade deals. Well, those of us who have studied these deals recognize that in fact they are corporate managed trade deals. When you take a job from an American worker who's making, let's say, $18, $19 an hour, and you move that job overseas and you play, pay that worker in that country 50 cents an hour, Morally, there's something not right. I was doing some work that made me aware 
of free trade uh, activities going on in the U.S. or activities related to free trade that were doing serious damage to the economy. And once I understood what was happening and I understood why it was happening, I felt uh, obligated to do what I could to make other people aware of what I had learned. We've uh, implemented a contest uh, with students in the four universities in the D.C. area. The idea is to get the students to be engaged in understanding and learning about the issues affecting their futures as well as uh, the future of the overall country. And the question that we asked was, what do you think it will take to rebuild, revitalize the U.S. economy? The larger challenge, though, for uh, kids today, uh, the 18-year-old um, who's out there celebrating his birthday today, uh, is uh, economic globalization. The students better wake up. They better learn about what's happening with globalization. The young people who are in school today, whether it be high school or college, are the leaders tomorrow. Maybe people don't want to hear, students don't want to hear about retiring. They're going to have to support a lot of people who are retiring. If a young person uh, is in college and watching this interview, then I hope that they will understand that they can make a difference.